HD2 does prove to hold its own as a reliable smartphone for everyday usage. The first thing that of course caught my eye when I first decided to purchase this was the 4.3 inch screen on the front of this phone. Now, in regards to smartphones right now, I don't think that there is anything else that can currently compare to the sheer size of this screen. It's basically unheard of until this point to ever have anything over four inches on a smartphone. On top of that, Having a screen so big allows you to capitalize on having, you know, an, a much easier experience in regards to seeing everything much more clearly with the interface menus. It allows you to see your pictures on your photo albums in a totally different high quality atmosphere. And it also allows you to take part in a capacitive touchscreen experience. Now, even though the capacitive touchscreen is not similar to that of the iPhone, I don't think it's meant to be a copycat of that well-known Apple device. I think that it is meant to give a whole new sense of efficiency to the Windows mobile platform, and the HD2 does do a good job of that. Even though the 4.3 inch screen is very impressive by smartphone standards, it does tend to bring up one problem of portability. Having a screen this wide does take away from the phone being easy to carry throughout the day. Being that the screen is so wide, you're going to have a little bit more difficulty in trying to use it as a typical candy bar phone that's tossed in and out of pockets or tote bags throughout the day. Um, you basically have to deal with the extra amount of bulk that comes from having a display that is so big. Now, in addition to having this bulk, you still have a considerable amount of thinness on the profile of the HD2, which may make it that much easier to be put into a pocket or to slide into some sort of tote bag or a purse or what have you. So whether or not having the benefit of a huge display is worth dealing with the bulk, that all depends on the individual user. So you'll have to make that choice for yourself when you take a look at the HD2. Now, HTC Sense is basically a newer version of what used to be called HTC Touch Flow 3D. Now, the only difference to me between the two UIs is that HTC Sense adds more color and adds a different look to certain interface menus. That's basically it. The main benefit of HTC Sense on the HD2 happens to be the way that it made the phone look. Being able to see breathtaking weather animations on the home screen and being able to see smooth transition effects really made this phone impressive and it made it a joy to use throughout the day. One huge benefit of the HTC Sense UI is that it makes Windows Mobile that much more accessible to the average user. Now at one point I did turn off the HTC Sense UI and I reverted the phone back to the default Windows Mobile format. Needless to say guys, it was not intuitive, it was very clunky, it was frustrating to use throughout the day if I wanted to get to a particular part of the phone quickly. Um, it just does not lend itself to being um, a, a trustworthy interface when it comes to using your smartphone throughout the day. It just doesn't. Having HTC Peep as a Twitter client really made it convenient for me to stay on top of my Twitter friends as well as making tweets throughout the day. In addition to that, having footprints basically allowed me to have my own digital scrapbook on my phone. And being able to take pictures of landmarks and have the phone automatically download location information to it really makes it a worthwhile experience. Now being that this camera happens to have a dual LED flash on it, you don't have to worry too much about having sufficient lighting when you're taking pictures. because. The flash that comes with this phone is more than capable of providing enough lighting in dark situations. With all of that being said, the HD2 is still a Windows mobile device. 
meaning that video capture quality is not going to be too impressive in comparison to what you get from the Nokia N series line. Now, even when you have the video light on in the midst of recording video, there still tends to be a bit of graininess that appears in the picture while you're shooting the video. Taking still pictures with the HD2 does prove to have sufficient quality, especially with the dual LED flash. Just in comparison with other smartphones, this basically is your typical Windows Mobile camera. And it really didn't surprise me when the video quality didn't measure up to that of the still picture quality. Taking voice calls basically sounded the same as any other smartphone, whether it be my HTC Touch Pro 2 that's unlocked or the Touch Pro 2 from T-Mobile. It sounds exactly the same over the earpiece. You have sufficient volume and I can hear my other contacts just fine during the conversation. The audio quality of the speaker, on the other hand, is pretty bad when it comes to listening to speakerphone calls and especially when it comes to listening to music. Um, while listening to my music tracks, I noticed that the higher up I went in volume, the more distortion became evident in the track. I was very concerned to hear the amount of distortion that came from this particular phone, especially after HTC did such a good job with the Touch Pro 2 speakers. The included headset for the HD2 really wasn't that much better either. Um, being that the earbuds just sat outside of my ear, music tended to sound very tinny and didn't have much bass frequency in it. Now, one great feature in listening to music on this device happens to be the equalizer function called Audio Booster. That, and it only works when you have the, uh, the headset plugged directly into the phone. So I guess give or take, you know, with the below average quality of the speaker and a below average quality of the headset, if you happen to have your own personal headphones, you should be just fine along with having the audio booster equalizer for listening to music. One huge downfall of the HD2, in my opinion, happens to be the battery life. I believe, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the battery for the HD2 is rated at 1230 milliamp hours which is a lot less than the 1500 milliamp hours on the E71 and the Nokia E90 and the Nokia N97. If you were to have this phone charged to 100% capacity overnight and disconnect it from the AC adapter and use it throughout the day, moderate to heavy usage, you'll be lucky if you get one full day of usage out of this smartphone. I'm just gonna have to be honest with you. For the first time ever in owning any smartphone, I ended up carrying my AC adapter in my pocket with my phone. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you happen to be a power user with your phone to where you surf the web, make numerous voice calls, listen to music, and you have on Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and GPS, you're going to have to charge the HD2 sometime in the middle of the day in order to get a full day's worth of usage out of it. So for me personally, the battery life on the HD2 was most disappointing, especially considering that it's got a one gigahertz Snapdragon processor that powers a 4.3 inch screen. I don't understand how HTC decided to go with such a small capacity battery. I mean, aside from maintaining the thinness for the profile, I really don't understand the logic behind choosing such a small battery for such a big screen device with a big processor. The only thing that I really noticed from using the one gigahertz Snapdragon throughout the day was quick navigation through every part of the phone that I needed to get to, as well as very good multitasking. And that was basically it. When it comes to playing back video content, it is amazing. I cannot tell you guys how breathtaking it is to watch a movie on this phone. 
Normally with a video file to put it onto a smartphone, you have to convert it to be able to fit the screen of that phone. There was one movie that I encoded directly from Handbrake and what I did was, out of curiosity, I took that one video file and put it right onto the HD2. And guys, it played it. It played the video that had been encoded directly from Handbrake. And there was no need for direct conversion whatsoever. That in itself was impressive. Because this same video file cannot even be played by the N900 or the N97 or the E71 for that matter. It was very impressive to see the HD2 and its one gigahertz Snapdragon processor steal the show by being able to play this huge video file. And I was very impressed with that. One more thing that I must remind you guys of, and I don't know if it's just me and my SD card, but whenever I put in a 16 gigabyte SD card with over 2,000 music tracks, the interface of the HD2 tends to freeze. I mean, it doesn't lag, it doesn't freeze for two seconds. It freezes to the point to where I have to turn the phone off and turn it back on again or simply take the battery out. I don't know if it's because it's not capable of handling anything more than maybe four or eight gigs worth of content. I don't know. I have always had to pick just one album and leave it at that. Otherwise, things would just go haywire on the phone. I didn't like the access to the task manager on the HD2. On previous HTC devices, you were able to access the task manager from the home screen in the upper right hand corner. But as you can see, in the upper right hand corner, there is no icon for the task manager. You instead have to go into settings, select other, and then access the task manager that way. Unfortunately, this is not an efficient way to do multitasking on the HD2. But at the same time, it is good to have multitasking instead of not being able to have it at all. One very interesting feature that I ran into on the HD2 happened to be the Wi-Fi router feature. Once you go in and cut it on, it basically allows you to turn your phone into a Wi-Fi router, which tends to be very convenient when you don't have any Wi-Fi access. This is similar to having a Nokia device and using an application called Joyku Spot, where you basically use the data network of your carrier to turn the phone into a Wi-Fi router. If you happen to be in search of a Windows mobile phone that is a one-of-a-kind device and you're not too heavy of a power user, I think the HD2 could be the device for you if you can handle the bulk that comes from having such a big screen. Other than that, if you are a heavy power user and you want to have additional portability to be able to carry this around with you throughout the day, you may want to have a second thought. If you're into recording good quality video with your smartphone, and if you're into having good quality audio that comes from your speaker, you may want to have a second thought on getting the HD2.
as great and as unique as this device happens to be in today's mobile industry, I have to say that it's just not the phone for me because it does not have a tactile QWERTY keypad. I need to have actual buttons that I need to press. I am glad that I took a chance on the HD2 because I did have a good time using this particular phone. So with all of that being said, I hope all of you guys stay tuned for future videos and you all take care and stay safe.